So the vice presidential pick is in. It is Senator J.D. Vance out of Ohio. A senator who has a never Trump past, but also at the exact same time has kind of came around to the idea of the former president, and now he's his vice president. So what do we make of this? Well, if you want a guy who was more MAGA, well, this right here should probably give you an indication of where he's actually going with this. Just on this border in Ukraine, uh, I don't, I gotta be honest with you, I don't really care what happens to Ukraine one way or another. Obviously no love for Ukraine, but I have looked into JD's background and guess what? Me and JD share something in common. We're both Marines. We're also both the same age. I think he was born in 84. I'm born in 85. But still at the same time, though, outside of that, there's actually a lot more that me and him do actually have in common. So I guess I can't really truly complain about the pick, especially given that his views are almost the exact same when it comes to mine on U.S. foreign policy. Now, this right here is what you're going to get with J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is probably the guy that Trump may have tapped to possibly lead the movement beyond him. But then again, there is also other possibilities. Like, for example, J.D. is actually extremely good friends with the very, very popular Vivek Ramaswamy. J.D. was born in humble circumstances. He's lived the American dream as well. His wife, Usha, is somebody who's a friend of our family as well. She was also a law school classmate. I think she could be a big attribute in this campaign in reaching non-traditional voters. And even further for J.D. himself, he is somebody who has a unique vantage point for bringing in new voters. Here's what it is. He wasn't somebody who was a Donald Trump evangelist back in 2016. So I think that's actually it's quite the attribute. opposite. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I, I acknowledge that. But what I would say is he can actually reach a lot of other people who also weren't in the Donald Trump camp in 2016. Mm. And in a very personal and authentic way, he can say, look, here's why I moved. And here's why I want you to come with us as well. So you, I think that's you. Before we really get into it, I find it that maybe it was the correct pick based upon Van Jones's reaction. Part of the reason that J.D. Vance matters um, isn't for these kind of short term electoral calculations. He matters because of what he means for the Republican Party long term. This is cementing a kind of nationalism. Yeah. Now, Trump, to your point, I agree with you. He, he's an instinctive, impulsive, intuitive nationalist. J.D. Vance is an ideological nationalist. That's a much more dangerous virus because he can make this, he can polish this stuff and make it seem palatable to people. He can sell this stuff to Silicon Valley. He can sell this stuff other places. And what it does is it locks the Republican Party on a pathway uh, that I think is dangerous for the world. Again, the Ukrainians are now in deep trouble. I mean, just listening to Van Jones qualler about nationalism and his fear of another white lash and white people and all that type of crap there, which obviously is not the case because J.D. is not exactly a pure isolationist. He just doesn't believe that we should uh, create vassal states and welfare states across the country, which, by the way, for the most part, uh, well, I meant to say it was across the world. My bad, across the world. Uh, a lot of these nations rely on the United States a lot. And, of course, they have the capability of taking care of themselves, and I think that's what J.D. really represents. Now, there are questions and concerns about J.D. that I will answer over the course of this video, so make sure you guys stick around for the full bit. Now, you guys obviously heard that, and I want you guys to go ahead and know something right now. There's two videos scheduled today. This right here is one of those videos. The second video is going to be one countering TYT's claims about what's been going on, especially the RNC platform, which does have some things that quite frankly, I'm not okay with. Just because Amber Rose has come out as a Trump supporter uh, does not mean that you platform her, platform her for five minutes. Just because Harvey Dillon is a Trump supporter, that does not mean that you allow some weird, weird, weird prayer uh, to be said at the RNC. Still, though, at the exact same time, I understand what the RNC is doing, and that right there may be a different video altogether this week, or I will probably talk more about that in yesterday's video on the whole both sides argument, which, of course, is getting absolutely destroyed. We'll talk more about that in the video that comes out on Wednesday. But the thing is this right here. J.D. Vance, being from Ohio, he comes more from the, how do I say, he comes more from a school that I'm a little bit more familiar with. He was raised, if you guys have ever seen the film, Hillbilly Elegy, which is directed by Ron Howard. 
it's on Netflix. And of course, if you've ever read the book, then you might get an impression or you might get the idea that JD has obviously had a life that of course has been full of all kinds of craziness. His mother, of course, was a recovered drug addict. His grandmother raised him for a bit there. Most of what's in the film is actually quite true. However, there are little things like, for example, the fact that he's a graduate of Yale, which does in fact concern some people because some people look at the uh, University of Yale as the establishment's breeding ground for those who will do its bidding. What are Vance's uh, actual views? Well, when it comes to the topic of U.S. foreign policy, Vance has got the approach of, we don't need to create welfare states, which is exactly what Europe or parts of Europe is becoming today. I'm not saying any nation in particular, but I'm pretty sure outside the nation of England, you're probably thinking to yourself, what does Europe actually serve outside of a buffer zone for Russia? Even though some people in Europe would say that Russia provides cheap energy, so why in the world are we at war with them? Well, I'm not here to talk about that, but what I am here to discuss is this here. Europe does need to pay a much, much larger share when it comes to overall cash, when it comes to overall defense. One nation in particular that I used to pick on was the country of Spain because I have family that's actually from that nation or was raised in that nation. Come to find out, Spain's actually kicked in a good amount of money, so I guess I can't pick on them anymore, nor will I do that. But still, at the same time, other nations obviously need to kick in their fair share. J.D. Vance is very, very much a part of that. However, when it comes to his overall economic views, people view him more as a populist, and I'll probably have a separate video out on populism. If you guys know anything about populism outside of Steve Bannon screaming and hollering that the job creators need to pay 50% in overall taxes, please let me know because I'm not as well versed on that. So I'm not really going to dive that much into it, but obviously some people got triggered by the pick. And of course, I'm showing you guys some tweets now. People are screaming, I will now vote for Joe Biden because Donald Trump took the vice president. Let me tell you something real quick. The vice president of the United States, for the most part, is just a ceremonial position. J.D. Vance, only being a senator for two years, definitely raises some uh, eyebrows, and not to mention his past, which, of course, I do believe he's already answered for. News <clears throat> on former President Trump, but Mr. Vance, we do begin with you. You've admitted you've changed your mind on Donald Trump, but in the past you've said, quote, I'm a never-Trump guy, quote, my God, what an idiot, and quote, God wants better of us, all statements you have either said or tweeted about Donald Trump at some point. The question, you have 60 seconds, why should Trump voters, Trump supporters, vote for you? Yeah, look, I mean, all of us say stupid things, and I happen to say stupid things very publicly. Um, you know, I, I've been very public about the fact that I voted for the president in 2020, that I was wrong about the president uh, back in 2015, 2016, and that he's been the greatest president of my lifetime for the very simple reason. There are many, but one very important reason is that he revealed the corruption in Washington, D.C. I mean, who would have believed five years ago, six years ago, that the FBI would actually investigate illegally, get an illegal wiretap on a sitting U.S. presidential candidate. Uh, we saw that. Trump revealed it, and he revealed it in a way that showed us the stakes of the fight, which is why I'm running for this office in the first place. You know, one thing I'd point out is that you know, I, was, I, was, I was just north of 30 years old when I said a lot of those things. A lot's changed in my life. Uh, I re-engaged with my faith. I got baptized three years ago. I've had three kids since then. You know, a lot's different. And one of the things that's different is that I did change my mind about Donald Trump. He was a great president. And I think at the end of the day, one of the things this race presents is an opportunity. Who actually agrees with Trump on the core issues of trade, of immigration? Who's willing to fight for an America first foreign policy? One of those tweets I mentioned before, because I showed you guys a bunch of tweets here, the B-roll footage, was this tweet that came from Marianne Williams. And you know, the crazy crystal lady. Where, and I'm just leaving this up for you guys to actually read. Uh, basically, what J.D. said was that the country right now is being governed by a bunch of crazy childless cat ladies. Of course, Marianne Williamson is a crazy, childless cat lady. So I, I thank you for making this point for him there, Marianne. We, we, we really, truly appreciate that. Basically, anything and everything as far as rhetoric is concerned, J.D. Vance actually said. But I'll tell you right now my honest-to-God belief on why it is that he said what he said. I believe he said a lot of the things that he said about Trump back in 2016 and 2017. Because they were probably J.D. Vance's ideas, and he thought that Donald Trump was a joke at the time during the 2016 presidential election. Now, let me go ahead and tell you guys very, very briefly, once again, my past, and I'll only be very, I'll be very, very brief with this. In 2015, 2016 time frame, when Trump was running for president, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was dragging the party down. However... When we get to the summer of 2016, I start to actually look into who's financing this campaign, who's financing that campaign, where I realized that Goldman Sachs had given money to both 
Romney and Obama, and they were giving money to both Hillary and Jeb and Ted, I realized that maybe somebody who's funding his own campaign might actually be good for the country, and there was no way in hell that I was going to allow Hillary Clinton's crazy, maniacal, evil ass in the Oval Office. Except unlike, say, Glenn Beck and Ben Shapiro, who stayed the hell home in 2016, I actually went out there and physically cast a vote for Trump. J.D. Vance probably stayed home. I really, truly don't know. He's never actually said it on record whether he has or not, but you would definitely get the impression, oh, wait, that's right, he did vote. He voted for Evan McMullen. Vance is a guy that, quite frankly, I will allow some form of forgiveness to because of the fact that his views are closer to mine and what I actually believe. If you want to rip me apart for that in the comments section, go right ahead. It's okay. You're allowed to say whatever you want as long as you keep it professional. And don't say anything that's going to get me removed from the actual platform. I mean, I did get a Twitter ban of seven days yesterday. And somehow or another, I could not post for about three hours here on YouTube thinking I might have received a community guideline strike. Which, in fact, I actually did not. Which makes me think that maybe I should go take down the community post that I put out there yesterday. But, of course, the algorithm also governs that as well. The fact of the matter is, is that J.D. Vance does have a past, and of course that past does not exactly look good, but when you actually look at exactly what he's always been for, and you look at the turnaround, and you look at the group that he keeps around him, guess what? You find out that maybe he's not too bad. I mean, there are two particular figures who have gotten a lot of respect, especially from the right, who've kind of sort of endorsed him. Case in point, Tucker Carlson. And I think every person who pays close attention has got to be thrilled by that. And if you don't know much about J.D. Vance, I'm not even going to make a case for J.D. Vance. I'm going to tell you what I just saw, which is that every bad person I've ever met in a lifetime in Washington was aligned against J.D. Vance. And I do think the negative case is often more powerful because I know of myself, I do not think I'm a particularly good person. I have strong reasons for feeling that way. I don't always think that my side is right. I know for a fact I have been wrong many, many times and I, I hope to correct and be honest about my error. So it's, it's not like I think that, you know, I'm always, you know, God's always on my side. Sometimes I'm not on God's side. To remove my hat for a second there, uh, Tucker, by the way, did call the events that did happen on Saturday. So it's very possible that J.D. Vance is just good old fashioned insurance. Like I said before, for the movement itself, but let's keep watching. Side. But I definitely know who's representing the other side. It's a lot easier to tell who the people who are only in it because they like, I don't know, killing other people in pointless wars. Like, I know who those people are. And their odor is so powerful that I can smell one when he walks in the room. And every single one of those people in a line that would extend from Milwaukee to Chicago was lined up over the last week to knife J.D. Vance. Not on personal grounds. I mean, he's a perfectly nice guy. He's like one of the only members of the Senate with a happy marriage. True, but because they thought he would be harder to manipulate and slightly less enthusiastic about killing people. That's it. That he would be an impediment to their exercising power. And boy, they went after him in a way I've just kind of never seen. I let that one run a little bit long, but there was also one more person who also kind of gave the shining endorsement, and that would be Alex Jones. King news for you and some inside baseball. Trump has just picked Senator J.D. Vance as his VP. An excellent choice. I happened to run into J.D. Vance at the TPUSA action event that I was speaking at. He spoke right after I did a few weeks ago in Detroit, Michigan. And I talked to him and his chief of staff, and they told me they were listeners for a long time. I know Vance has defended me uh, before against these attacks on free speech. And I said, hey, I hear you're the guy. And he goes, yeah, uh, I, I think I've got it. And so Trump keeps his cards close to the vest. I was blown away. Uh, that that Vance actually told me this. And then quick, let me reiterate, I'm not the biggest fan of Alex Jones, even though I do find Alex Jones to be entertaining, and I've got my own views about Alex, and of course those views range from, okay, he got this correct, he got this right here right this time, okay, to the point to where, dude, I think you're throwing out a little bit too much information, it's really just BS this moment time, and it's not getting us any closer to the actual truth. I've got my own views on Alex, but of course Alex Jones has got his own little niche, his own base as well. However, it still does concern me some things and some of the takes have been kicked out. Like, for example, and I know I'm kind of going off topic here and kind of going off the rails here, but uh, the tweet that I shared earlier about Amber Rose, that came from Matt Walsh. And he actually got a response that I did not include in the video from Ashley St. Clair, not the biggest fan of her either, where he basically said, look, what are you doing to gain any additional votes? 
he's not doing anything to gain any additional votes. It's one of the biggest reasons why it is I'm not really a big fan of the Daily Wire because outside of Michael Knowles, these people aren't adding anybody at all. Uh, they're not exactly what we call good political strategists. However, Alex Jones, and for all the faults that he has, is still very, very much a guy who does have an understanding of what's actually going on inside the Beltway. And of course, he does, in fact, always let us know exactly what these people are scheming. So if you can get Alex Jones, then chances are you could probably get the overall MAGA vote itself, which is one of the reasons why it is I don't see J.D. Vance as a negative. If anything, I see him more as a positive now, just simply saying. But let's let this last part roll at the green room door with his camera on and almost slapped him. I love Chase, but, you know, this was a private meeting and there's Geyser, so we'll even have that on tape. Uh, but I'm not going to put it out. Just amazing information, ladies and gentlemen, because Marco Rubio is super ultra evil. Very well spoken. I admire his mind. He's very smart, but he's a deep stater, folks. And Trump was signing his death warrant if he did that. Uh, you know, that goes the same for the, you know, the governor and all the rest of it. Uh, Carson would have been great, very trustworthy, very smart, very good man. But this is a good choice. J.D. Vance, vice president for President Trump. And I was a good boy and did not now, break. I know that a lot of people are screaming and hollering and they're raising hell about this. But to those out there who worship Tucker Carlson and those who worship Alex Jones, I don't think that these people are BSing you. I think that Donald Trump picked J.D. Vance because he views J.D. Vance as the most logical successor to keep the MAGA movement going. Trump's going to be in office one term, one term, one term. If he gets elected, which I'm pretty sure he will, he's only going to be there one term. And in order for him to actually succeed in that term, he's going to need to do what? He's going to need to get as many Republican senators as possible. Hence the reason why it is that once this next round of cash comes in in August, he's probably going to be putting a lot more money into every single state, every single Senate race. He's going to need an actual Republican Congress and Senate to help him actually get his agenda through. When he got elected in 2016, guess what happened? He only had 52 senators, and he didn't really have much of a mandate in Congress. So it's actually a miracle he was able to get what he could done. So please spare us the whole BS of what well, he didn't get the wall done, uh, even though Mexico put their troops at the border, and they were actually spending their resources to protect the U.S.-Mexico border. Please spare us the BS of, well, Trump did not get this done. Trump did not get that done. Did the man actually have a Senate? No, he did not. He did not have a Senate that was willing to work for him. Now, of course, he does have that opportunity. You're probably wondering to yourself, why in the world he take J.D. Vance, especially given the fact that Ohio will probably replace Vance with a rhino. Not if the public opinion is so strong for somebody else, hence the reason why it is that Vivek Ramaswamy suddenly becomes extremely important because it looks like he may be the one who's tapped to actually get J.D. Vance's seat. I see nothing but good things going forward, but trust me, there are some things to critique. With that right there being said, my thoughts on Vance for this right here. I think that he's uh, a solid pick. I think he's a good pick. I personally wish that Donald Trump had maybe taken Ben Carson, but uh, as good and as smart as Ben Carson is, he's not exactly what we call dynamic. In J.D. Vance, you, did, you do get a guy who can campaign, and to the people who think that J.D. Vance is going to be kryptonite for Trump in the suburbs, I want you to know something right now. J.D. Vance won the suburbs in his Senate race by five. So can the BS arguments. With that right there being said, guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. The second video of the day will be cutting down TYT because they've kind of become my favorite punching bag here recently. But I'll see you guys later on this afternoon. This video right here will be out right around 2 o'clock this afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. The other one will be out right around 6 or 7. Peace out.